WBEI today about Tom Brady looking at his options, and he decided Tampa was a better option. Why weren't the Patriots a better option for him when both Robert Kraft and Brady himself said over and over how much they wanted him to finish his career here? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm not going to go back and rehash all that. We've talked about that. Really, my You've focus right now is on the. Yeah, my us. focus is on the game here, and look, I have so much respect and appreciation for Tom and everything he did here, and for me and for our team. And uh, you know, we're just getting ready to compete against Tampa this week, and we're going to keep our focus on that. But you've never you talk about rehashing dynamics that you've already gone through. You've never done that. Yeah, uh, we we made a statement when Tom left, and that that covered it. You surprised how well he's played? He's thrown 61 touchdown passes in 23 games down there. Uh, One Tom, Super Bowl. Yeah, Tom's a great player. Nothing surprises me that he does. Fair That's enough. You know, I've watched that video several times. That's the first time I noticed that it appears Bill Belichick is drinking from a can of soup. Hello, Tom Curran. <laughs> Welcome in. Well done, by the way. Well done. I say this with no, I say this with no sarcasm, or any degree of passive aggression. That's I thought rare. that was excellent. Holt, hey Miles, Miles, butt out. I, I, <laughs> well done, well done, Thank giving you. it to Bill Belichick because that whole it's already been addressed nonsense. He he plays that card all the time, even if it's never been addressed. That's his way of turning the page. It's already been addressed. No, it hasn't. You've never talked about it. I thought that was excellent. And the reason it's important, guys, to do it in this instance is, look, this isn't Peyton Manning going to Denver after a neck surgery and Ryan Grigson moving on from him. This is the greatest sports franchise in NFL history in many people's, at least dynastic, not franchise, but dynastic run. It came to an end. The head coach hasn't spoken about it. The player has gone on to be unbelievably productive elsewhere, win the Super Bowl. We can't just let him say, yep, you know, I addressed it with a statement or, oh, we already talked about that. Or, oh, I'm looking at the game. This is football history, and nobody's more of a historian than Belichick. So for him to basically say, I'm not going to talk about it, is basically peeing on the intellectual curiosity of everybody who gives a damn about professional football and his team. So I knew he wasn't going to answer. I hoped he could because it's not a difficult question to answer. But – that's why I blurted that out. I didn't really mean to. I was like, all right. Yeah. Well, and, and Tom, I mean, do you feel like there's regret on the part of the Patriots at this point, especially given the, how well he has played in the last year, year plus now? I don't think that there's necessarily regret over having let Tom Brady go. I think that the regret would stem from decisions made prior to Brady leaving. For instance, hmm. the Patriots – didn't provide Brady an option. Belichick primarily didn't provide Brady an appetizing option to stay. They didn't give him the two years guaranteed. They never gave him the extension. That's why the option that I was trying to pin Belichick down on was so insufficient. But the reason they didn't is because they had constructed their team in a certain way from really about 2015 on that was all in, all in, all in. And they did such a poor job in free agency and such a poor job drafting that they had to reboot. Had they done a better job in those areas, and yes, they were drafting late, but they had, had they done a better job in those areas, then maybe they wouldn't have had to move on from Tom Brady. Maybe he would have been part of a good team. But right now, this team had to be completely store-bought because it was run aground personnel-wise. Yeah, and look, it's not just a failure of drafting. I think it's a failure of development. That gets overlooked in this because it's not like they are drafting guys that people are saying, who the hell is that? I've got him in round seven, and they're taking him in round one. I think Bill Belichick has a degree of impatience with young players, and he'd sooner plug in a veteran who knows what Belichick wants than take his time to teach a player who just doesn't get it. I think that impatience we see from him in press conferences spills over onto the practice field, and maybe he doesn't take as much time with certain young players as he should. Is there any merit to that? Some, and I think he also has overestimated his coaching staff at times. You know, Matt Patricia was not a great defensive coordinator. In his last two games, he got riddled by the Jacksonville Jaguars and then by um, 
the Philadelphia Eagles. He gets hired. He goes to Detroit and proves that he's not really that capable. Well, now he's back and he's part of the franchise. Right now, we don't know who the defensive coordinator is, but we know with all the parts, whether it's Gerard Mayo or Bill or Steve, they're not playing real well. Dante Skarnacki is elsewhere. How much protection is there for Mac Jones? Look, there's been a lot of attrition on this team. But in the end, Bill makes the final decisions on personnel. And he makes the final decision on bringing in Antonio Brown or irritating Rob Gronkowski or grinding him down. And in the end, he has to be the one that's responsible for a, a roster that had to be completely rebuilt and overhauled. Tom Brady's numbers and dead money last year was $13.5 million. They just spent a buck sixty in salary for this year, in guarantee, excuse me. So, I mean, he didn't have any kind of salary cap hold over them. It's That's why it's so disingenuous to pretend, nope, Tom just wanted to go to Tampa. We would have loved to have had him. No, you didn't. So is this week in Tom Brady coming back and all the pomp and circumstance that, you know, nationally we're making it out to be, is it a bit as big of a deal, you know, not as big of a deal or a bigger deal locally? Locally, it's a massive deal. But I think you'd be surprised uh, to learn that there is a Brady fatigue that's gone on. And there will be not a small number of people who are in that stadium who will boo. I'm not saying it's going to be 30,000. I don't even know if it'll be 20. But I would say five to 10 have probably had enough of Tom Brady. Look, it was great that he won the Super Bowl. They're happy for him. They understand Bill's a hard guy to work for. But the success of Brady coupled with his um, <laughs> omnipresence and the fact that guys like you know his, his dad or Alex Guerrero are not shy about pointing out that Bill could be a dink. Um, all of it has Patriots fans a little fatigued. So it's a huge deal, but people just want the game to get here. Well, there's nothing like the anonymity of a large crowd to empower people to boo, and it doesn't take much booing to drown out or at least be audible amid mm -hmm. cheers. And that's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. And there's going to be several moments early before the game, when he comes out of the tunnel, when he's on the field the first time, and also, Tom, when he sets the all-time passing yardage record. Do you know <laughs> if they're planning to stop the game for that and give him the ever-important laminated sheet of 8.5 by 11 paper from David <laughs> Baker? The, the, the Drew Brees from Memorial stopped the game in Week 17 uh, ceremony? I don't know. I, I really don't. And here's the interesting thing. I think that both Bill and Tom want to high road the hell out of this. You know, Tom Brady was mad about his dad's comments. Mad at me, mad at his dad, and he let it be known. And he let How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? How do I know? How do I know? How do I know? He let me know. Did you get a, did you get a phone call? You got a phone call? Email. He emailed you? What did he say? What did he say? He thought it was, uh, well, I mean, you saw, you heard the, the comment he made to, to Jim Gray, the, the statement, tongue-in-cheek statement, but he, he didn't think that it was right for me to ask his dad to speak for him. So it was okay. Well, what did I he have to him. say? Okay, time out then. You know what's funny? He made the comment to Jim Gray about his dad. He hasn't said boo about what Alex Guerrero said. And I think what Alex Guerrero said is a hell of a lot more controversial because Guerrero knows how this guy feels about how, how he was treated by Bill Belichick. And for Guerrero mm -hmm. to say that Bill Belichick never evolved and kept treating Tom Brady like he was 20 years old was he, when he was in his 40s, that's straight from Tom Brady, in my view. I don't think any of it, whether Tom Brady feels vindicated or whether he feels like Bill didn't evolve, I don't think any of it is a stretch to believe that Tom Brady feels that way. I think we would all be morons if we didn't think that Tom Brady, A, felt vindicated, or B, felt as if Bill didn't evolve. I mean, he's bristled at everything that Brady tried to do individually for TB12. Tom versus time is a recitation of Bill not evolving and Tom's difficulties with it. What rankled Tom Brady was that he felt the timing was poor. Now, I I don't know what his Guerrero feelings were, but I spoke to Alex last week, went down to Tampa to interview him, and Alex was on pins and needles, didn't know whether to poop or go blind. We can't have anything out there. It's going to be a problem. All right, fine. So he didn't want it out there. He didn't want to add to it. So the point I'm trying to make, Mike, and you are riled up, I could tell. You want more on this, so we can do more. But the point I'm trying to make is they don't want this. And I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see Bill and Tom hugging at some point pre-game or post-game so that all of the dysfunction is pushed to the side 
it, it does it. seem like, I mean, because I was at Tom's press conference after the game in L.A. where they had just lost. And, of course, they asked him about it because you got to ask him about it. And like yeah. you said, it seemed like he really wanted to take that high road and just kind of said, well, we are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's been a tough loss. And, you know, we've got to go and we've got to play better. I have to play better and all these different things. So, I mean, I, I would assume that that's the approach that you feel like he's going to take for the rest of the week. No. Yeah, he doesn't want to add to it. When it comes time to have all grievances fully aired with his name attached to them, I think he will pick that time. I think that time could come. I don't know if it definitely will, but I think it could come. But it's not going to come now. Mike, go ahead. You you were riled up on the Guerrero stuff. Come on. Well, no, I'm fine with that now. I've moved on. Because I also okay. think that part of the psychology here, and we know with the Patriots, everything is a psychological battle. I believe that the Patriots regard Tom Brady as a player who is prone to maybe not being at his absolute best if he's feeling emotional. And I think that's going to mm -hmm. cause the organization to do everything they can to be over the top kind and charitable and mm -hmm. emotional and the video tributes Dang, and it's a great read. everything calculated to get Tom <laughs> the cyborg to act like a human being <laughs> just cutting mm -hmm. onions at midfield i mean yeah i, I think that's an <laughs> awesome read by you mike and, and i hadn't thought of that that is the upside soften him soften him make him you know put his sword away don't turn it into the red wedding on us we love you um that's that's a tremendous point well, how do you think Mac Jones is going to handle all that? Because oh, I mean, even though we're talking too. about, like, you know, we're talking about the fact that Brady's going to be doing this and this and that. This is a football game that they got to play, and Mac Jones is the quarterback who effectively has replaced Brady. Yeah, that's a, an awesome question because when we look at it, so far Mac Jones has been so far from the problem for a Patriots offense, which has had its travails. They have not been good through three games. They benefited quite frankly, from the inefficiencies of Zach Wilson in week two. But Mac Jones has been in, under extreme duress, as you saw in that pick. And if they can't protect him, and Tampa does what Tampa does, 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 well, if they are Tampa Bay, it's going to be 10 nothing pretty quick if the Patriots play at the level they have been. And then you're going to put Mac Jones in a situation where he's dropping back 30, 40, 50 times. And he can't have that. He doesn't have the protection right now to withstand that and he's going to get blasted around so if this game gets out of control i don't think that the fans will be uh as much after mac as they would be after bill but there's potential for it to be an ugly night and we could say oh well he played in alabama that's pretty big stakes there it's not sunday night football <laughs> it's not the greatest coach of all time and the greatest quarterback of all time who's staring across look if brady wasn't a big fan of jimmy garoppolo being there and he was a fan of the guy he just wasn't a fan of the fact of jimmy garoppolo how do you think he's going to look across the field the baby face mac trying to do the job that everybody's saying that he's the next brady not not so good Boy, and that is going to be the strangest moment for tom brady because sam darnold told me that after week one when the Jets went to Carolina and Darnold in his first game after only three years with the Jets had to look across the sideline during the national anthem. Brady, after 20 years, standing mm. on the sideline at that stadium, on the wrong sideline, in the wrong locker room, looking in the wrong direction at the flag, just everything that goes along with it. You know, Tony Dungy made the point over the weekend that when he went back to Tampa the first time as coach of the Colts, he said all week, it's just another game, it's no big deal, no change, no difference, and then he got there and he realized, oh my gosh, this is very, very different. I just wonder if Tom's going to be able to process that and what kind of, of meditation, mm -hmm. sports psychology, whatever he's doing this week to get his mind in a spot where he doesn't fall victim to the human reaction that any normal human being would have. I think that really on beginning on Friday, it would probably be a good idea if he started pulling the old, I mean, <clears throat> you probably remember this, Mike, because you're an avid reader. Remember what Brian Cox used to say, how he envisioned his opponents? Um, 
if and I'll send you the story later if you want to. It's a Sports Illustrated story from way back. But if Brady does the same thing, I wouldn't be surprised. He has to compartmentalize every emotion that you mentioned, any nostalgia, anything like that. And he has to look at the Patriots as the enemy, maybe not sworn enemy and try and bring back, oh, he hosed me and made me move my business and my family and everything else and I wanted to stay here. Or, oh, Robert Kraft never stepped in and saved it. But he has to hone his his emotions to a point where there is no flagging and there is no impact on his focus. So I think it's a great observation by you. That why not try and butter him up? It's <laughs> like just stop crazy the game. Train. Think about that. Just stop the game, yeah. bring out a podium, a big float and everything else. And Tom's like, I just want to play. No, no, no. You just broke the record. We're so proud of you. <laughs> yeah, all those yards that you got here, man, they barely are any from Tampa Bay. We love you. Right, we love you. Right. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that that's going to, you know, not be a big deal, at least in some aspect or other. But what about Gronk? I mean, we're all talking about Brady and everything that comes with Brady, but like Gronk is coming back too. Is there any emotional impact that you think that that will have um, from any standpoint? Well, Gronk, Belichick, Belichick. And when we talk about irritation over departures, we can talk about Belichick maybe having any second thoughts about moving on from, from Brady. And I don't think he does. He, he's just too much of a pragmatist and says, look, this is the situation. This is what it was. This is what we did. I'm not going to go back to 2017 or 18. But with Gronk, <laughs> just a genius move by him to get what he wanted. I mean, he retired, but he had a year left on his contract. He waited until the Patriots, if he came out of retirement, would have their cap blown up by his salary. Belichick goes, we're not going to trade you. We're not going to trade you to Tampa. We'll trade you wherever we want. Okay, then I won't report. Okay, well, then you're not going to play for anybody. But I'll come out of retirement and blow up your cap. So they finally just had to say, okay, fine. That made Belichick incensed. That was an irritation. So I don't think there's nearly as much tenderness towards 87. Tom, I know you watch PFT Live every morning, so you already heard me say this yeah. earlier today. One of my strategies for how to get Tom off his game is to just have at the right moment into his field of vision enter John Yastrzemski and Jim McNally. That would be beyond genius if they the could set that up. The, the deflators, yes. Do, yeah, no, have Dorito Dick and the deflator. Um, That's right. Have them, have them show up. I know that would, won't happen, but, but that, would definitely, would never, that would definitely cause would, a reaction. It would, but they would never, ever, ever do anything at the Patriots' yeah. behest. If Tom told yeah. them to jump, they'd both say how high. But the Patriots expunged them. Their yeah. bitterness toward the Patriots, or at least one of their bitternesses, is, uh, is extreme. But that's the long play. That's the genius that's of it. That's the long play. It's it was all genius. a setup from six years yep. ago. By you the way, by the way, the Belichick hood on, and when he presents him that eight and a half by eleven, it's it's Dorito Dink. We, we've got to, we've got to go to break. I will say Why? this though, on behalf of all the monitors into which the peacock is now permanently embedded because of your neon sign on your one shot. Thank you very much. Everyone's going to be heading to Walmart or Best Buy tonight to buy new TVs.